Welcome to Wednesday Live Coffee Talk Show. This is a show where I bring you love, courage, and connection because I believe through inspiration, we empower each other to start taking action. So every Wednesday, I will invite a guest who will share with you their life journey and how it transformed them in their life to become and finding the greater selves. And today I have a beautiful lady who's here with me today. And yeah. her name is Tanita Bisley Kears. She is a wife to a wonderful husband, Derek, mother of one, the author, speaker, business coach, facilitator, and with over two decades of senior care, decided that this is the perfect time to provide information to help the generation that is left in the gray area. She believes that the seniors carry the wisdom that can pass down to generation to one day gain a better understanding for everyone. Tanita enjoys all that life has to offer and consider every day a blessing. And when you meet her, you'll understand why she <laughs> has this perfect smiles on her and she's just the most beautiful lady as you can see on my pictures um so without further ado join me and welcome tanita yeah, thank Yay! you so much tanita. michelle thank you so much i appreciate that that was i was like wait who's she talking about <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that so much yes Wow. Well, you know, it, it's very, very, um, I feel the same sometimes because when people read my bio, I feel like, that's not me. That's, that can be me. And that, you know, <laughs> that's all that negative self-talk going on. But, you know, thank you so it's much us. for joining me today. Um, thank you. So tell us about yourself. I know I read a little bit of your bio, but, you know, I would love to know more. And I'm sure our audience, too, they would love to know more about you. Sure. Well, first, thank you, Michelle. Um, I have to say, when we spoke earlier this year, when all of the craziness had started to happen, um, I was like, okay, I looked at everything that you put out on Facebook. And I said, let me do some research. Because for me, I like to connect with positive people. And um, I looked at everything that you had going on. And I was like, I'm going to just reach out and see. And when you actually was a real person, <laughs> <laughs> and not a bot or something. I said, okay, yes. And then we spoke and we got on a live, you know, together, FaceTime. And I was like, I certainly want to be connected with her because she's positive. I mean, anything and everything that you talked about was just warm into my heart. So first of all, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit about my, my um, book and a little bit about everything that I'm doing is a little bit earlier this year, it's been a while actually for a couple of years that I always am teaching about the gray areas of different types of industries. Mm -hmm. And so a while back, um, I just, I had this meeting um, with my nine to five. I had this meeting and I said, you know what? I'm always writing things up for different people for different industries. And it's always like those little bit of pieces, like the things that's in the, it's not white, it's not black, it's literally in the gray areas. And it's good stuff, but people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. So after each class, after each time I'm talking with someone, they're like, I wish I knew that. And I'm like, like, who doesn't know this? That's what I was thinking to myself, like, who doesn't know this information? So the more and more as years went by, I said, wait a minute, I should probably put this in a book. Then I said, no. So literally like three years passed, I didn't do it. So I'll say this to everyone. If you have something in your heart, please just do it. Just go for it. So, and I'll probably say that again a little bit later. So years passed by and I said, okay, let me go ahead and just finally put this in the book because I'm literally saying the same thing to everyone. So the gray areas brand is about opening up your mind and letting you know that listen, those areas that you don't even think you know about, you need to know. Because when life happens, you should have known this information. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, um, the Great Areas book for senior apartment living is pertaining to me always talking to different residents and their families about different things. And so one of the things inside of the book it talks about, and we'll talk a little bit about it later on, is where to place like your parents or yourself if you're 55 and older. 
So what happens? What happens? Because now I'm in that I'm in that demographic to where I will start beginning to take care of my parents. Mm -hmm. I have aunts. So what happens with my aunts? My cousins need to know this information. Family members need to know what happens when you get to this. Well, you can go assisted living. You can go um, just a regular senior apartment living. You can take care of them in your own home, but you should know this information so you won't have those headaches later on. Mm -hmm. um, I was speaking with a gentleman that I'm networking with um, last week. I just met him and he asked me the same question. So we went on ahead and we talked about a little bit. And then he said, and I believe he's on this live. Um, he said to me, he Let's said- give him a shout out. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to see if he says it's okay. So I'm going to wait for a message. But I said to him, he said to me, he said, Tanita, I literally had to move um, my grandmother um, last month. He said, if I had your book, this would have helped us out because we did a full month of headache trying to get paperwork done. So I'll say, I'll leave this main point with everyone. Regardless of where you place your parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, whoever they may be, always try and get the proper forms, get you a power of attorney, mm -hmm. get something in writing while they're still in their able mind and go ahead and sign off. So you'll have to necessarily, um, you need to choose someone who is going to be that person you can trust mm -hmm. and say, let me go ahead and put it in writing. So for example, it's me and then I have two younger sisters. We're now, you know, we're in that process of doing things for our, for our mom. So if you have someone that you trust, someone that you want to take care of, you need to make sure that you're that point of person. If you are, put it in writing, get it a power of attorney. Mm -hmm. That is extreme. That's going to help you out in the hospitals. That can help you out if they're living in a facility or at a community. Um, some may say they don't need it, but it's never a bad idea. Mm -hmm to go ahead and get it. I, I wanted to, you know, <clears throat> backtrack a little bit because I, I think when we first connected, you had you had introduced yourself and then you said you got into this whole, um, you know, the gray area, you have this passion for the gray area because you were a property manager for a long time. Yes. And one day you were sitting in the office and there was a lot of paper that was starting to come in and all you do is a lot of paperwork. And I remember when you were describing it, I could see the frustration as a property manager, you know, dealing with all these files and tables and papers. And how did you how did you actually start it? Like, how did you recognize that this is even a problem? This is even a thing. So uh, going way, way back. So when I was a teenager, my grandmother, um, she became sick and my grandma, they said that my grandmother had um, Alzheimer's. So um, I'm a Christian woman. So I said, you know, let me go ahead and ask people to pray for my grandmother. So my family members, we all, you know, got together and prayed and all that great stuff and sent out people to pray. And so in the midst of that, uh, my grandmother became really sick. And so they wanted to put her in a home. Well, I was underage, but I was living with her at that time. And so I refused because I didn't know much to have her be put into a home. So I refused. So what I did was I dropped out of school and I took care of my grandmother for a short period of time. Went back to school, graduated. She was able to see me walk the stage. So thank God for that. But during that time, she got her memory back, which we really still, they said it was a miracle. We still don't understand what took place. But in the midst of that, my heart for my grandmother, I was taking care of her and my cousins and everyone. We came in and stood up and took care of her as we should. And um, I also worked for a facility in Florida that was, um, that was a transitional place, so assisted living. And so taking care of the residents there. And I really treated them like, like if this, is my, this could be my grandmother in here, which at one point it was. So doing all of that, um, I just had a love for seniors because it came from my grandmother just taking care of her. And I wanted to make sure that everybody's grandmother and grandfather was taken care of. So going into multifamily and going into senior care, I ended up getting the job and becoming assistant manager and then becoming um, the property manager for a senior community and seeing all of the other family members and friends coming in asking the questions that little 16, 17 year old Tanita was being asked. And I'm like, I, I literally see myself in them. 
they're coming and they're asking me questions about their parents now. And now they're at that stage where I was when I was 16, 17 years old. So it's my obligation to make sure they know and they have the answers that they need. But when you're, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're in that field, you still have to make sure that you're taking care of your residents. You, you do the best that you can with their family members. But in order to move a lot of things forward, they need that power of attorney. They need to have some type of emergency contact listed because you don't know who such and such is coming off the street asking questions about someone and you don't want to release that information. So you want to make sure you have names attached and information attached so that you can help that resident out before if that resident you know, get, has dementia or Alzheimer's or anything like that. So that's where my heart started from way back, 15, 16 year old Tanita taking care of her grandmother um, who took care of me all my life. And it just went on into, I ended up just happening to be a, a senior property manager. And, and now Tanita is just taking care of everyone else. <laughs> I try. I really believe if we all did that, of course, this world would be in a much better place. Look at everything, basically a glass half full versus half empty. Just take care of people and, and everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. So so you started to work on this book. Mm -hmm. What is the gray area? And, and by the way, Tyler, Tyler said it's okay to, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. So we can give him a shout out. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> Hi, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, so it was Tyler that I was speaking with. Um, so <laughs> that's funny. I was like, I'm not going to say his name because he may want to stay incognito. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name. Um, Hi, Tyler. So the gray areas, and I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to show what it is. And it's not a long read at all. I get straight to the point let you read it. You literally can read it. You know, if you're somebody that soaks it all in, you can take long to read it, but it's literally, it'll take you probably an hour to read it just to get it all in and make your notes. There are areas in here, in here where you can go ahead and make notes. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, one of the chapters that I um, love is congratulating you to come home, which is the last chapter, chapter seven. So it's just basically talking to the residents about listen, this is your time. Go ahead, enjoy these, enjoy all of the years that you have left. This is your time. You've done everything that you needed to do. But on in chapter five, it talks about the POA and everything. So this is literally telling you, um, this is what you need to do. Now, whether you get an attorney or whether you just get someone to notarize it and get that information out there and get it on file and you keep a copy for yourself, then that'll be good. So um, you gotta, you gotta read the book. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? So, so you got me curious now because there's a lot of paperwork that's involved once you put someone in the, the home, right? Yeah. So for whatever reason, I say I cannot take care of my parents and, and I need to make that arrangement and put them into a home. What would be some of the steps that I need to, I need to think about? Like, so I know to have that power of attorney, um, you know, what else do I need? So when you are going, let's say you decide, because there's different facilities. So if your family member, your parents have like a health issue, so you have what they have, a senior luxury apartment living, that's not necessarily for someone who needs health. Um, needs healthcare providers. Now you can move them inside of those facilities because those communities, because you can always hire a caregiver, which would be much, 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 much cheaper. So that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Caregivers are beautiful people and they um, basically charge a whole lot less. So if, if that's something, if you don't make a million dollars a year, something like that, and you want to go ahead and still make sure that your parents are living somewhere really nice, you can put them in a luxury um, community and just hire a caregiver. Now, if you need someone who your parents are really, they need changing, they need different things like that, and they have to be monitored because they have like dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that, you put them inside a facility. And when you put them inside the facility, you want to go there, you want to make sure you have a, a book with you and write all the notes down, get contact names, and talk about the different um, areas that they'll be taking care of for your family member. So you know what they'll need for it to a degree. But then also 
they'll know, they'll let you know, this is what you're, what we're offering. Mm -hmm. Don't just stop at one place, always go to other communities around the area that's as such. So you can have someone that's strictly focused on dementia or that's strictly focused on Alzheimer's or a combination, but get to know those people. Always be nice to them, mm -hmm. always be pleasant, get to know them. I don't care if you have to once a month drop off Krispy Kreme donuts, whatever it is, bribe get to, bribe them because <laughs> them they're taking care of your family. Not that you need to, but bribe them and just be nice to people. Yeah. Um, so make sure you keep your notes, make sure you keep it in a safe place at home, whether it be a safe or anything like that, something, something similar to where you can keep up with all your information. Um, and look at pricing, compare your pricing to all the different communities to slash facilities. Um, if you can afford it, great. See if it is a buy-in price, because some places, uh, they want you to buy in for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Right now with what's going on with COVID-19, a lot of them aren't doing that, but go ahead and find out, listen, how much is it a buy-in? Is it a monthly fee? Is it an annual fee? Some communities, they'll say, okay, well, they're not doing that. It's a one-time fee. This, this particular community that I know, they charge a one-time fee, $200. That's it. Wow. That's a luxury community. Wow. And you can get a caregiver. <clears throat> I, I need to move to that area. Where is that at? <laughs> <laughs> I'll inbox you now. <laughs> Another community, they want you to pay $50,000, but it's a facility and it takes, it has nurses, it has your meal planning in place. It has um, where they come in and check in. Um, it's not very large, but it's what's needed. So you always wanna make sure that you go in and ask for a tour. Um, of course, right now, a lot of places aren't doing that, but when everything starts to get back to what we believe will be normal, you wanna go ahead and make sure that, hey, let me come in and look at this community, see how they treat you, drive around there at nighttime to see how it looks at nighttime, what's the nightlife. Um, and then what you wanna do is compare. So always compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges, mm -hmm. um, compare your senior, um, communities um, as well so wow I can only imagine like just from hearing this I feel like wow I didn't think about all these and because I'm thinking well putting putting them making that arrangement to a facility or to a nursing home that should be easy right but and and I didn't realize that there's so many steps um it's so I don't want you to feel overwhelmed so the eat so here is the top I'll give you like a top three. One, first you need to find out the location. So where will your parents be or whoever it is? Are they coming to you? And in my book, it does say that. So are they coming to live with you, meaning in your area? Whoever it is that's gonna be taking care of them, where will they reside? Will they reside in your local area? And if you decide that no, nothing is here in this area, then you have to be the one to move, but you're the one that takes care of them. In whatever area that is, look those communities slash facilities up. Once you look those facilities up, then go and schedule for your touring and start to get a feel for them. See how compassionate they are, how empathetic they are, how they will treat you. Because if they're treating you nice, you know, and then, then you can bring your parents along and say, well, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. And if they get a good sense now, I will tell you, remember something, when it comes to seniors, they've done everything they needed to do all their lives. This is new to them. Be patient, be compassionate, be considering, think about, it's them. Remember, you're going to be there one day. And how would you want somebody to treat you? So don't, don't get frustrated because some, and I see this a lot where I have um, family members coming and say, I'm really trying to just move her and she just won't move. And I say, listen, it's your time now to be the quote unquote parent. What were they doing when you were 15, 14 years old? They were a little frustrated and they're like, ah, yes. Okay, so now is your time to be patient. You have to consider this is a big deal for them. They're, you're now telling them I'm going to be somewhat taking taking care of you and taking away things that you've known all your life. Some of them may lose their driver's license. That's a pretty big deal. Some of them now have to be fed. That's a pretty big deal. So you have to consider all of those things and think about, well, if this were me, how would I feel 
if someone were having to take care of me? Because one day it may be your kids. Now, I have a daughter, I just have one. So I'm having this conversation with her right now as last week we had a very, very deep conversation. And she was like, wow, I was like, yeah, baby, it's pretty much, it's on you in a sense when your dad and I get older. So that's why we're preparing now. So if you prepare now, you, you will have a lot less of a headache later. You go ahead and you say, okay, well, you start asking those questions while they're in their right mind, some would say, because we don't know if they're gonna have Alzheimer's or dementia. You, we could just pray against it, but we don't know. So what you do is you say, okay, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, godmother, whoever it is, as you age, where would you like to reside? I want you to be here with me. If, if you wanna go live with my brother or whomever, we need to know this. Sometimes they won't answer because they're afraid to make that decision because for them it's saying, I choose that one child over the other child. Sometimes you have to be the one, the family needs to get together and say, let's take the decision from them and let's make it on our own. And now that we've made it, let's share it with them and say, well, this is what we have decided to do. It's a lot less pressure on them. And then you'll say, okay, well, all right, not a problem. And now we can move forward with finding out where we want to place you or, or you just live with us, if that's a, uh, an option. Yeah, I, I think, you know, one of the ideas that I, I, when we first connected, I thought this would be a great topic because, you know, we go through our life and life is a cycle. Life is a journey. We all yes. have birth and then we eventually we all die at some point. And in between that area is where we may not be dead yet, but we're getting to that point, right? Yeah. So we gotta, especially if I'm looking at my personal perspective, 10 years down the line or 20 years down the line, I may not be married. I don't have anyone to take care of me. So I need to start thinking about planning for myself. Where do I want to be if I get sick, if I have mm -hmm. dementia, if I have Alzheimer, like where do I want to be? And this is a conversa conversation a lot of people are avoiding or they don't realize that they need to have. So that power attorney that you have brought up, it's a great um, reminder for all of us to think about while we can, while we're capable, while we're mm -hmm. able to think about where you want to be when you get older. We all get older. Yes. And another thing, you're, you're right. If you don't have someone in your life, you need to designate someone. So if you have a friend, if you have someone that you just feel like we're not that close, but I trust you enough to make a decision on my behalf, because if something happens to me, I don't want to just be out there. So you got some time, think about it, and you choose, okay, well, these are my make a list, five people, this person is this type of way, this person can do this, this person lives in this state or this city. Um, and then you go ahead and you bring it on down to that one person and you talk with them, you have that conversation and you say, I would like for you to be my power of attorney. I would like for you to, um, to be that person that, that I've designated to take care of me if something happens, mm -hmm. would you agree? And if they say yes, now you just move forward with that. You can also do that with um, your medical. You can also do that with your, of course, with your finances. Two separate things. It doesn't have to be the same person because some people you can probably trust with your medical and not with your finances. <laughs> but <laughs> if it's the same person, great. <laughs> if it's not, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I know, I know who I'm going to come to for sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't, you don't want to just choose someone to be over your finances because they're good at taking care of you because they may be terrible at the finance piece, but that's something that can be worked out. That's a great point. So, Well, we got, we got a couple of minutes left and, you know, I wanted to not only to wrap up, but because you share so many valuable information here, just, just by within the last couple of minutes, you know, the, having that power attorney and, and there's, have, getting the contact and interviewing people from different facilities so that you get a feel of what the environment would look like. Like, what would be your giveaway to the audience who's watching this, like for today? So, a few things. So, I wanted to go um, give you some tips for 
uh, for your seniors. Right now, we're dealing with this whole COVID-19. So if you have someone in your life that's 55, not, not even just them, it, it'll help you all as well. Um, call them at least twice a week if you live far and they live by themselves. Call them. They need that interaction. Being stuck in the house, they need that. Stop by, please stop by your scenes, your grandmother, your mother. If you can stop by, stop by there at least once a week. If you cannot go inside, it's okay. Call them on the phone and say, I'm outside. I'll be, you know, I'll be pulling up in a few minutes. I just want to say hello through the window. That will bring so much life to them. Let them know that you still care, that you care. So contact them, tell them I'm on my way over there and stop by. If they have to just wave out of the window, that's okay. That did a lot for them. All they're gonna do is get on the phone and talk to their friends and tell their friends, my such and such just came by and they're gonna love on that for the next couple of days until the next week. Mm -hmm. um, encourage them to get out. If they can, get out and move. So if they're, it doesn't matter if they're in a wheelchair, if they use their legs, whatever, get out, smell the fresh air, if they need to get in the garden, if they just need to sit outside, just do it. Play some music, remind them. So think about some of the things that when you were a kid, what they used to listen to, remind them about those songs, ask them about a memory, why this song was so, that they played it a lot. That just does their heart good. So I want you to think, I want everyone to do that for their grandparents and parents and everyone that they love. Um, another thing is try to choose, um, one month out of the year, one to two months out of the year to take to schedule their doctor's appointments. They're getting to a place to where they forget. They can't remember what, if they set things up. So help them say, hey, when was the last time you saw your cardiologist? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Every February, we're gonna set up all of your doctor's appointments. Who is your doctors? Every February and every September. The neat thing about September is, <clears throat> excuse me, September is um, fall prevention month. So if you think about, okay, here it is, it's fall and it's, you know, it's fall prevention month. Let's go ahead. This will be the second time I take my parents, my grandparents back to the doctor, talk to them and remind them to pick their feet up mm -hmm. so they don't fall and break a hip. Talk to them about, you know, making sure you hold on to countertops and things like that, use those things. If you have a walker, use it. If you have a cane, use it. If you wanna get away from that, then you go through your doctors and discuss that. But you wanna go ahead and say, use these counters, use the wall to help you move around. So mm -hmm. just take care of your family and friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the comments on the Facebook, um, it says they lose autonomy. And, and I think it's so true that people lose their autonomy um, when they get older, you know, they don't stop deciding for themselves anymore. They can be this very powerful person, but when you look at, you know, where they are as they aging, as we all age, we become a child again. Yes. Yeah. My grandmother used to say to me, she said, um, you always take care of older people and babies. And I was used to be like seven, eight years old. I'm like, what? And she would say, take care of your seniors because the older people, babies don't know any better. Seniors, they revert back to being a baby eventually. So you have to take care of them. So mm -hmm. I love my baby seniors. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a room full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. Yay. So show us your book again. Tell, tell us about your book. Sure. So this is, you can find this on the gray areas, senior apartment living on Amazon. Just go into um, Amazon and just type this in and this is how it looks. And then I have a moving planner because another thing what I used to have issues with and still do is my um, prospects would come in and always bring, um, they would always bring papers and then forget them. And so I was just like, okay, well, choose a folder. And I would always just try to help them choose a folder. Here's a folder from us, you know, and put all your things in there. But then they would say, 
Well, I, I left it and I gave it to my daughter. Okay, so I created this. And in the back of it, it has notes for you to go ahead and put down um, your, your information. So it has a lot of different notes in there where you can say, okay, well, my loading dock date is this, my, my loading dock date is this date. I get keys on this date. Um, I will, I will uh, move in on this date. So it tells you, it gives you a lot of variety so that everything is in one area. And again, that's both of them are on Amazon. Um, I am yeah. not on, I'm on Facebook for my, for Tanita Beasley Cares, but for the great areas, I am not just yet because we're putting all that together, but I am on Instagram and my Instagram is the underscore great areas. So you can follow me there. And then um, my website is www.greatareas2020.com. So you can go there. I will be posting some more tips um, for my Instagram and on my website. So go back and forth there to go ahead and get some information. Let's stay connected. And I will have all the link information in the episode notes so Appreciate that people it. can just click and find you, you, find this Thank beautiful you. lady. And Thanks. you know you know what I love about what you just showed is the moving planner. I feel like moving planner, a lot of even the younger younger kids, you know, like the college kids right now, they, there's like people moving away to college. Yep. They can yep. use that moving planner too, because I, when we first moved to California, you know, we, we there's a lot of planning that was involved and like which truck is going and when am I leaving, getting onto the airplane? I need to put that down too. Um, so moving planner is great. It's a great resources for people to have. And I'm just Thank a you. planner enthusiastic. So when yes. I saw the planner, I'm like, yes, me. <laughs> Thank you. Get it. Look, I'll get it. But here's the thing. What's funny about that. We were, my daughter and I were getting our nails done and I literally did not think about that. And my daughter says, mom, this, I'm going off to college. This could be for me. She was like, what if um, we talk to uh, college students about this? I was like, that's pretty neat. And she got up. It was a, um, a couple who was going to college and she went over to them, looking at her while they're doing my nails. And she says, let me ask you a question. Are you college students? They say, yeah, we're, um, we're seniors. We're a rising senior. Um, so I said, okay. So I said, so she goes, if you had this, would you use it? And they were like, a moving planner to move? Yeah. And she starts talking to them about it. And I was like, well, guess what? We're going to create you a moving planner for you. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're right. I had not thought about the college students. I really had not because let's think about seniors. <laughs> Yeah, and you have all your heart and passion into the senior, and it goes way back when it backs when you were taking care of your grandmother, and it's just very inspiring to see and hear that we as we think about ourselves, you know, we may become successful, but then you know, yet there's these population where they were taking care of us, and now it's our time to contribute and to give back. And how yeah. do we give back? And so I love what you do. You're such an inspiring lady. Thank and you. I hope your, your husband is watching this by now. <laughs> I don't know yet because I'm not on there, but hi, honey. <laughs> He's my biggest supporter, him and my daughter, they are. And What's I will say my sister, Melissa. My husband is Derek. My daughter is Kirsten. My sister, Melissa, she's been supportive and my sister, Dina as well. So thank you. Yay. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming, Tanita. It's been a pleasure. And I, I love the beautiful smiles. And, and last time we connected, she was sitting in her living room and it was just very relaxed. She was showing me her outdoor. It's in a very quiet and, and peaceful area. I said, it is. I need to move there with you. Yes. Okay. I told her she has no choice. She has to come. When all this stuff is over with, you are certainly invited to my home. We, we, I will have something planned out for us. Yes. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you. I just want to be there with you. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I can't wait till next time. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you all for joining us this morning with this beautiful lady, Tanita. It's a pleasure. And, and again, you know, I will have all the link information for you in the episode note and go check out the gray area on Amazon. And I will see everyone on Wednesday next week. Bye.